So I want to introduce uh, Councilor Jane Stromberg. She is the former, a former Burlington City Council member, was the youngest city councilor elected in, to the Burlington City Council in history, um, and also a consistent, strong climate activist. Um, her day job is working with VPERC, and I am just so excited to have a fellow organizer and advocate um, joining in, in co-hosting today. Um, in terms of this call, we are going to ask that speakers today, the, the, the elected officials who are, who are um, generously joined us today, just to ask you to keep your remarks to under two minutes to make sure that everybody has a chance to share and that we can help people get back to wherever they need to go next after this. We're going to leave this Zoom room open for a 15 minutes past the half hour for folks who just wanna hang out and chat informally and we'll stop the recording at that point. Um, I have these little cue cards. So one says 30 seconds. When you have 30 seconds left, it's the blue. And then another says zero seconds when uh, your time is up. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about Zoom is you can click mute, but I really don't want to be muting doing that. So please just be mindful. Um, we'll we'll give a five or a ten second grace period. Um, let's see, what else sh should we say? I think Jane, that that's about it, and I'll pass it over to you. All right, thanks so much for that uh, very kind introduction. So yes, my name is Jane Stromberg. I'm a former Burlington City Councilor, youngest woman elected, just to make sure we're not taking credit away from the other folks. Um, and I am just so grateful to be able to share this space with you all today. Um, we're probably gonna fly through this because there's a lot of information and a lot of voices to hear. Um, so yeah, we will be hearing from uh, leaders from impacted towns. Um, from state senators, and this is a collaborative informational session. So if you have any tips, tricks, advice, links, you know, donations, volunteerism, otherwise, please just throw it in the chat. This is um, the best way to kind of get as much information out as possible, as quickly as possible, and we're happy to share that on the back end as well. Um, so it is my um, pleasure to introduce to you all, I'm sure you all know him to some extent, um, but Barry City Mayor Jay Kemmerich. Um, I, I'm just so impressed by your leadership, your compassion, of being on the front lines of, of this tragedy that has unfolded in, in Barrie. Um, it has also been really meaningful to, to see the community strength in Barrie too. Um, and you're highlighting that very well as well. So um, I'm just gonna pass it over to you. Great, thanks, Jane. And it's awesome to be with so many great climate thinkers. I was just gonna set my timer and make sure I, I'm on track. Um, yeah, uh, Barry has definitely been um, very hard hit, perhaps among the hardest hit communities in the state of Vermont with this one. Um, for those of you who may not be, be a little less familiar with Barry, we are the largest uh, community by population in Washington County. We're a working class town. We're not a rich, rich town. We have a median household income of less than $40,000. We have the second oldest housing stock in the state of Vermont behind Fairhaven with a median old age of 1945. And we have uh, among the, uh, the least resource and most vulnerable people within the region to flooding, the heat, um, heat uh, events, the security risk, the noise and air pollution, access to healthy food, transportation, essential things that we all need as, as humans to have, have dignity. And, and right now, Barry is, is still very much in a response mode. Um, we have uh, downtown apartments that have been without power for seven days. We have evacuated homes clinging to the sides of eroded banks. We have cellars um, slowly getting empty, emptied, and, and we know that mold risk is really high at this time. And we'll be doing a lot of work on uh, thinking about after this what what has worked and what and and what's not working in terms of how we can bounce back. Um, from events like that. But one thing is clear, Vermont will have um, to adapt and withstand to future climate crises. And, and that will take more than uh, just investments in decarbonization and renewable energy. And those are really important, but it will take some shifts in how we, the, how we invest in the places um, or where we develop, how we move around, how we protect the ecosystem services like greenways. And, and one thing that I'm thinking about a lot right now is as uh, we're ready, just getting ready for recovery is that um, 
is about building back better. And that's, you know, not just for Barry, but that means better governance, emergency response, better better streets, roads, culverts, infrastructure, better, better greenways, and better lots and sites and buildings. Um, so I could talk a lot more, but um, those are some of the things we're thinking about. And and for the leaders on this call, I uh, I hope uh, I hope you go into the the next legislative uh, round with those things in mind. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mayor Jake, for your participation today and for all of your leadership, your work in Barry and being right there. Um, Jane was saying very kind things about you before our call when we were getting ready. Um, I think the, the next person that we wanted to hear from, um, and by the way, you did a really great job modeling the keep it, keeping your remarks concise. Thank you. There's so much to say and, and, and we just have a few minutes today. Um, I want to next introduce Representative Connor Casey, who is a representative from Montpelier in Washington County, one of the Washington County districts. Um, I had the good fortune of connecting with Representative Casey, I think first on Twitter, and then I uh, got to meet at the State House a couple of times. Most recently, I think it was at the, there was a youth climate rally. Um, Earl, you may have had something to do with that. It's great to see you here. I know you're involved with the Sunrise chapter, chapter up, up your way in Chittenden County area. Really good to have have you here too. Um, but Representative Casey, want to hear, um, just hear from you being in, from in Montpelier, you sent me photographs of just your own home and the river, and i um, really glad that you can be with us today. Uh, well, thanks very much, Isaac. Uh, thanks everybody for putting this together. I, I think it's important we come together um, during a, a tragedy like this, which, you know, is certainly affecting all of us. I, th I think it takes a, uh, it's sort of a statewide trauma when you go through something like this, because we all know somebody who's suffering right now. And it's very surreal to walk down, you know, State Street and Main Street in the state's capital here. And it looks like a bloody war zone, you know, um, shops, you know, restaurants and residential areas. And it always feels like, you know, Jake was kind of touching on this, always feels like the lowest income houses who are like hit the hardest in something like this. Um, so I, you know, I think we went through a period of, you know, initial like shock and disbelief, um, which went to anguish, you know, obviously for people who've lost all their possessions to now sort of being in like, okay, what do we do now mode, which I, I, I think after a week is, is kind of where we're at. Right. Uh, but it brings out the best in people. It's, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, neighbors come out, communities come out, uh, and help each other at a time like this. And, you know, in a, in a time when we're increasingly snarly and isolated, you know, post pandemic, I think if you if you hold a slimy couch out of a basement with uh, people down the street, you know, you, you sort of look at them in a new light. And, you know, I, I hope that uh, I hope that endures, you know, but a uh, great volunteer effort. We've had 2000 people sign up through Montpelier Alive. So if anybody wants to help out, I would uh, direct you there. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it's it's. I, I found like, you know, the the one thing we're switching to is rather than just having like a hub where people can come up to us if they need support, really going out and finding people, right? Because, um, you, you know, not everybody knows the resource, not everybody has electricity still. So we've been canvassing, you know, we got from the Vermont Democratic Party a list of phone numbers, we've been doing phone banks, just seeing what people need um, and really trying to educate people, you know, about the sort of health repercussions here of what's going on. Because when it first happened, you know, I think we were all the same. It's like, let's just get in the basement and get stuff out of there. You don't think about like the mold issues. Um, as Jake was saying, I spoke to the commissioner of health yesterday and I said like, what are we gonna do for testing? He said, well, like the good news is you don't really have to test because mold is definitely in all of those uh, cellars right now. So we need to have a big education effort. And I see the card there, Isaac. So I'll, I'll wrap up, but just wanted to thank everybody for their support. And we will come back and we'll we'll have the capital cleaned up for you <laughs> when we uh, reconvene in January. So thanks so much. Uh, thank you so much, Representative Casey from Montpelier. I'm really glad to hear your voice. And I see that uh, Jane has pasted in the ch chat the Montpelier Alive link. Um, 
And uh, I wanna just give a shout out to folks from the Sierra Club Vermont, who I see, uh, Sonia Riley here, who's a fellow uh, executive committee member of the Sierra Club Vermont chapter. Thank you for, for being here. I'm, per I'm participating today in my individual capacity, um, but uh, really appreciative of, of your leadership, Sonia. Um, we next wanna hear from our state senators who are able to join, join us today and want to start by introducing Senator Nader Hashim. And Senator Hashim, I have known to be somebody uh, who is, uh, is always thinking about people who are most vulnerable. And when I was um, talking a bunch about people around the world who are de dealing with issues having to do with clean water and access to food and stuff like that. He said, you know, there are people just down the street in here in Wyndham County who uh, don't have access to clean water. Um, and that was, that was before the flood. So um, just really appreciate that perspective and also your commitment to, to climate action that's uh, been consistent over the years. So as Senator Hashim, the floor is yours. Awesome, thank you, Isaac. I, I appreciate that introduction and uh, thank you everybody who's on this call today. You know, I, I wanted to just keep this short mainly because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, my, my role here should be to hear from the folks all around the state who've had a wide range of experiences um, with this catastrophe that we've experienced. And, uh, you know, kind of go into what uh, Mayor Hemmerich mentioned earlier, you know, I, I want to hear about what's worked and you know, what hasn't worked. And is that... And so... All right. Anyways, so yeah, so I, I really just wanted to hear from folks who, um, you know, who were the hardest hit to find out what's worked and what hasn't worked. You know, Wyndham County, that we we did have several towns that were hit, um, not nearly as hard as Montpelier and Barrie, but you know, one of the first things that stood out to me was there was a bit of a disconnect between um, local volunteering and state volunteering, and you know, local volunteers not quite knowing what resources were coming from the state. And then, you know, there was this concern about duplicating efforts or, you know, not sending resources to the right area. So that was that was one of the first things that came to mind, um, at least down here in Wyndham County. So uh, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing about any other discrepancies or any other areas that need to see improvement when it comes to climate resiliency, which is, uh, which goes hand in hand with reducing carbon emissions and um, addressing our role when it comes to climate change. So thanks again for organizing this, Isaac. Sure thing. Thank and you so much, Nader. Um, and I'm, I realized that I meant to put an agenda in the chat at the beginning. Um, and so I'm going to actually put that in now so that you all can see where we are. Um, that we're going to hear from Senator Vihovsky. Um, and then we're going to have a moment for uh, folks to uh, just to connect in the chat, to share reflections, um, want to hear what's resonating with you from what you've been hearing and and maybe anything thing that's inspiring to you. Um, I know that Senator Wendy Harrison, also here from Win from Wyndham County, I forgot to mention uh, Senator Hashim and Senator Harris are my my senators down here in Brattleboro. Um, they, uh, Senator Harrison is is attempting to join in. We'll see if if the the Zoom link that I sent her works. All right, so um, back to you, Jane. Thanks, Isaac. So it is again my privilege to um, introduce Senator Tanya Vahovsky. I'm just so inspired by the work that you've done over the years um, with gun safety and childcare and mental health and um, reproductive justice, and of course, the climate crisis. So um, I definitely want to give you a moment to um, introduce yourself and, and share your thoughts. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Jane. Um, I'm Senator Tanya Vihovsky. I represent Chittenden Central, which is Winooski, Burlington, Essex, and Colchester, which arguably was not as hard hit as a lot of the state. But I know, you know, some of our Chittenden County towns were. Um, but I also know that there's a lot of people here who want to know what to do and how to help. And so it's really helpful for me to hear what opportunities there are. Um, but I also 
I'm a systems thinker. And so zooming out, you know, some of the things that I have not been hearing, and, and it has been reflected here, you know, we are in the early days heard a lot about how businesses could be reimbursed. And yes, we want to support our small businesses. But I found myself thinking about people whose mobile homes had floated away or people who are working class or living in poverty who are now homeless or who don't have the ability to front the repair costs that they're being asked to by FEMA to be reimbursed and really starting to think about how we can support those people who we know, as it's been said, are the most impacted by the climate crisis and often the least thought about in how we we rebuild. And I also really want to think about as we go into the legislative session, how we are, as, as um, the mayor said, thinking about how we rebuild more sustainably, more resiliently, and because the reality of it is, is these, these catastrophes are likely to happen again. And we need to really be thoughtful about how we keep people safe and we keep our s cities and towns from being this devastated again. Um, so that said, one of the things that um, I actually just put out or an op-ed will be coming out later in the week, um, our attorney general is actually suing some of the um, largest oil companies for their knowing um, dishonesty in in the and their contribution to what we're facing now. And so I think really getting the public's support for that so that the people who have caused this are are investing in helping us to solve it and respond to it. I think it's really critically important that we're thinking both how we respond right now, but also how we create stronger and more resilient communities going forward. Um, I will be going into the legislative session thinking about a bill that we worked a little bit on last year in one of my committees that is around emergency response and how we make sure our critical supply chains can quickly get back online in instances like this one. And I think that we're seeing pretty clearly with you know people without power for a week and people who are not not able to access food for days at a time, that that is really, really important. So I'm really here to hear from everyone how I can be helpful and how I can help send people here in Chittenden County where we've been a little less impacted to you to be helpful. Thanks Thank so much, you. Senator Vikoski. Um, we have Senator Harrison is here. Senator, Senator Wendy Harrison is one of my two senators here in Wyndham County. Thanks so much for joining us and um, love to hear from you about uh, the, the floodplains in Brattleboro and any anything else that you'd like to, to share here. Thank you, Isaac. And um, thanks for uh, organizing this. It's super important. Um, I wanna talk about resiliency a bit and how to prepare for these storms. Um, they are going to come more frequently. After um, Hurricane Irene, the town of Brattleboro uh, was faced with a decision on how to handle a uh, affordable housing development that was in the floodplain. Um, there were a number of homes that were uh, uh, still in fair shape. Um, they had been inundated by flooding. Um, the town did not want to rebuild in that location. Um, I don't know all of the details, but I do know that there was controversy and some folks did want to want to rebuild. So it wasn't clear that it couldn't be done. Um, but uh, the the housing authority who owned the, the homes um, also agreed that folks should not be located there. It was a year long or many years long process. They had to find another uh, place for the for the folks to live. They actually ended up building um, a, a large um, building downtown in Brattleboro, which was just completed a couple of years ago, and then restored the floodplain. And it's on the Whetstone Brook. I don't know if any of you are in, uh, familiar with that, but the Whetstone Brook is actually the the body of water that has the highest differential in elevation in Vermont. So when it does rain in Marlboro, which is the, the uh, where the brook is from, we get a lot of, of flooding here. Um, and the floodplain was restored, as I said, a couple of years ago. Um, it has, a lot, it has um, uh, demonstrably reduced the limits of the flooding. Um, engineers are working there now, and we ha should have some determination of the the uh, benefit of it. Um, but um, but it's certainly a huge benefit. Um, in the meantime, the town started working with the Vermont River Conservancy on a second floodplain 
uh, restored floodplain um, closer to the downtown. That one um, uh, is in the um, process of being acquired uh, by the town, and that's another few years in the making. But I'm, I'm really proud of the town for, for taking this initiative. It wasn't required. Um, I will be looking in the session for ways that the state can support these these initiatives because it's it's just crucial. Senator Harrison, I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. But, I'm I'm good. All right, and thank, thank you so you. much for thank you for you know, so much for talking about the the floodplains with us today. Um, I want to turn it back to Jane. And first of all, thank you everyone who just shared. Um, at, at this time and want to turn it back to Jane. All right, thanks so much. Well, in the spirit of sharing, please put in the chat any thoughts or feelings you have from anything people have said today, any ideas that you you have kind of jumbling around up there or um, just observations of, of what, what's been going on in the in the state over the last week. Um, there's no, no nothing wrong you can put in the chat. Um, and we'd just like to collaborate a little bit on that front. Um, awesome. Jane, I'm also wondering if there's like, I know we have a couple of, of young people here who are Thank involved you. with Sunrise <laughs> and other youth climate organizing. And I'm just wondering if, if any of them would want to just say a, a few words about what you're up to. That would be fantastic. Earl, would you mind if I put you on the spot, my friend? Um, no, yeah. Um, hi, my name is Earl. I'm a high school student and I run the Sunrise Chapter, which is a youth climate organization in Vermont. Um, yeah, we've just been sort of, we're trying to figure out how we can get like Sunrise National to help with sort of stuff. Um, I'm really glad that a lot of our elected officials um, talked about how that a lot of different groups and people are really hard hit and we oftentimes don't sort of talk about that. Um, and I'm really glad that there are a lot of people that care about this. Thanks everyone for like, I don't really have anything much to say other than I'm just here to listen and see how we can um, support, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Earl. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to hop in and just introduce yourself or, or say anything? No pressure, of course. Um, either way, I'm just going to pop some resources into the chat. Um, if you're looking for outlets to donate to um, for volunteering, um, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm taking off my work hat in this moment, but I do work for the Vermont Public Interest Research Group, and we are working on the Make Big Oil Pay campaign, and that actually goes really along the lines of what uh, Senator Vyhovsky had brought up about holding those responsible for this climate disaster and mess um, accountable. Um, they've known Big oil companies have known for decades uh, the, the impacts of, of climate and um, you know the, the damage that they have caused. And um, so we are trying to do something about that this summer and, and going into the next legislative session. So just a little, little nugget there. Thanks so much, Jane. And these are really great resources. We put together one option to donate when, and what's listed here is the Vermont Community Foundation Vermont Flood Response Recovery Recovery Fund. It also includes a number of um, economic development programs, uh, specifically the like, like for example, Southern Vermont Community Action um, that are focused on helping supporting low income people uh, who are hit first and worst by disasters like this. Um, we have the volunteer link for Barry City. Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Jake, who spoke earlier. Um, and also we heard about Montpelier Alive, which is another way to plug in. Um, there's the advocacy, the, the, the link to the Make Big Oil Pay campaign where you can sign the petition and join VPERG's campaign. And then finally, tonight, 350 Vermont is hosting a webinar from 7 to 8 o'clock to talk about the climate justice movement in Vermont. Um, and there's a registration link is included there. Uh, what I'd like to ask us all to do in just our last two minutes, and remember, you can stay on past uh, 1.30 if you would like to stay and just chat, connect um, informally uh, off, 
off, we'll turn the recording off. Um, but I want to invite you right now to just to put in the chat one thing that is either on that list that we just provided or one thing that's not on that list that you're going to do after this call to support our fellow Vermonters in um, who are most affected by this flood, but also making sure that we're thinking about people down the road and protecting our fellow, uh, our neighbors, our, our friends, our family members, and the people we don't know. Um, so we'd love to see you put in the chat what you're going to do. I will say that right now I am um, going to, I promise that I'm going to join the Make Big Oil Pay campaign. Um, I just wrote an op-ed in where I put a plug for that campaign, and I, I look forward to actually signing, signing up there. Um, I'm curious what other folks are going to do. I see that um, there, I already see some uh, comments in the chat and look forward to seeing more about what you, your plans for, for action. Um, we want, you know, I love what Greta Thunberg said is that like when she was asked something about like what, you know, about hope. And she said, um, it's not like you sit or it's like the idea is you don't sit around just like trying to find something hopeful. It's actually we take action, we lean into action and, and we get hope from that, that action is inherently hopeful. Um, and it's inherently, it's, it's very hopeful to me to see all of you who've come together um, and who come together today from across Vermont, from so many towns and cities to, to care, to take that time and to, to really show up. Um, and to connect. And that's that's what community is all about. That's one of the reasons why I love Vermont. And this is, that's why I've decided to make this my my home where I'm, I'm originally from, but to come back here. Um, I want to just see if, um, Jane, if there's anything else that you want to say uh, before, but it's it's 1.30, so. Yeah, I uh, quickly just want to really express my gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time today during this lunch hour. Um, I know that it's been a particularly heavy week in Vermont, and I am just so impressed and inspired by the communities and the strength and the spirit and uh, the motivation um, that, that people have to just build, rebuild, keep going, connect with others, make check in on others. Uh, it is really... It, it, it really has brought me to tears in multiple occasions over the last week. And I just am so proud to live in Vermont and be here and be among among you. So thank you so much. Um, I personally have to get back to work. So I'll have to hop off before that extra 15 minutes, but um, it's been a pleasure. All right. Thank you, everyone.